Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting these colorful Christmas lights. Despite the detail, this is actually quite easy to paint with only a few simple steps. And like usual, I'm going to start by drawing out the outline. Firstly, I drew out a curved line going across the page to map out the placement of the light cord. And since I want to paint five Christmas lights with different colors, I drew out five lines so I can space it within the frame that I have. And this will also help me place the lights according to the angle of the curved cord. The lines indicate the center of the lights, so when I'm drawing out the lights, I make sure to take advantage of the guide and draw the lines side by side for the top part of the Christmas light, connecting it with a curved line. Then for the light itself, I drew out an elongated upside down egg shape. And I'm just going to repeat this five times for all the lights. After I finish drawing all five, I'm going to clean out the lines as best as I can by erasing and redrawing any scratchy areas to make sure that the pencil marks won't show through the paint. This is also very important when you're going for this cleaner realistic style so the edges of each element looks nice and crisp. At the top of each light, I'm also going to add a curved line where the cords are going to connect to each of the lights. Next here are the colors that I'll be using. There's quite a lot here since we're making the lights all different colors. Firstly, this is Sepia by Holbein. Viridian Hue by Holbein. Rose of Ultramarine by Daniel Smith. French Ultramarine by Daniel Smith. Manganese Blue by Windsor & Newton. Naphthal Red by M. Graham. Crimson Lake by Holbein. And the Yellow Light by Daniel Smith, Indigo by Schmincke, Moon Glow by Daniel Smith, Yellow Ochre by Holbein, and Bleed Proof White by Dr. P.H. Martins. For the first one, I'm going to start with yellow, so I'm using Hansi Yellow Light to paint the base color in a medium consistency because this color is quite light and bright already. I'm just going to paint the whole area while trying to make the edges as neat as I can. Once I'm done, I'm going to add a bit of Nathal Red to the yellow on my palette just to make a slight orange color. I'm using a medium consistency to paint the reflections and the shadows. And then I'm going to soften the edges using a clean damp brush if the surface that I'm working on is already dry. I basically want the darkest part to be at the top and the bottom of the lights and that's something that you can build along the way. So here as you can see I added more naphthal red because after softening the edges I find that I can push the color more so I'm just going to repeat the same steps and then soften the edges again to enhance the dark color. And this is the pattern that we're basically going to repeat for all five lights in different colors. For the next one, I'm going to be making blue. At first, I thought that I wanted the French Ultramarine to be the base color, but I felt like it was a bit too dark, which is why I switched to the Manganese Blue to be my base color. The French Ultramarine was quite staining, so you can see that I couldn't cover it up with the Manganese Blue and it wouldn't spread out. But that's okay because it's going to be covered with the reflections and the shadows that I'm painting now. For the dark blue, I used French Ultramarine in a medium to thick consistency, and I'm basically following the same placement as what I did with the first light, more or less. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, I just want to make sure that the top is dark and I leave a light area in the middle where the light is going to be and as for the bottom to have an outline of that dark blue while leaving the edge of the light base color and then just softening the rest. The next color I'm going to create is red and for the base color I use Naphthal Red mixed with a bit of Hansi Yellow to make a dark orange color. Naphthal Red is quite opaque so I'm using quite a light consistency here and that's also why I made the base color more of an orangey red so I can use the Naphthal Red by itself to add on the details. 
Before I paint on the detail, let me just draw it out in case the painting wasn't clear enough to follow. The areas that I'm drawing right now are the areas where I place the colors initially with the darker colors. And now what I'm drawing are the areas where I smudge the darker colors down or I follow it up with a darker version of the base color to soften the blend. Now I'm going to do the same thing with a medium to thick consistency of naphthol red. Here I'm painting the darker areas for the top bit that I drew out before and then I'm going to pull the paint with a clean damp brush to soften the blend and hopefully after seeing the sketch this becomes a bit more understandable. I mentioned before that not every single light has to look completely uniform. You may notice that I pull the colors differently with each light and this doesn't matter too much as long as you have the basic shapes down like the area in the middle and the light area at the bottom and how you pull and blend the paint is pretty much up to you. The next color I want to paint is green. Here I mix viridian hue with yellow just to make the green a bit lighter as the base color. I accidentally mixed the French ultramarine into the green and as you can see it stained the paper again but we've been through this and that's fine because it's going to be covered by the details later anyway. For the detail, I'm using a thick consistency of Viridian. I also mixed in a bit of the French Ultramarine from before, just to deepen the green slightly. And as for the placement, it's pretty much the same as the last three. Hopefully from here, you can also start to see that every detail I add on, including the paint that I soften or pull, generally follows the curvature of the cross contour of the light, and this will give the round volume of the light. Moving on to the last one, I'm going to use Rose of Ultramarine as the base color. This color is fairly dark so I'm only going to use a thin consistency for the base color. For the detail, I'm going to follow it up using a thick consistency of the same color and I'm going to treat it exactly the same way as the others. So that's pretty much the hardest thing for this painting. Next, I'm just going to enhance the colors further by layering the same detail, but only for the top and bottom without covering too much of the base color and the detail that we initially painted. So going back to the yellow now here, I used a mixture of Hansa Yellow Light with a bit of Nathal Red and this time with added sepia to darken it further. Here I also felt that the yellow wasn't rich enough so I ended up going back with just the Hansi Yellow light by itself just to make the yellow a bit more richer for certain parts of the light. So you can see that I'm being very minimal with this layer right here because it's just supposed to add extra detail. So for the blue I'm going to do the same thing and this time I use a medium to thick consistency of indigo. For the red light, I used Crimson Lake in a thick consistency to add the darker details. If you find that creating the thin lines at the bottom is a bit difficult with this large brush, you can also switch to a liner brush or a size 0 brush for extra control. For this one, I also added a thin consistency of naphthol red around the middle portion of the light because I felt like the base color was drying off and fading a bit too much. Moving on to the green color, I use a mixture of sepia with viridian to create the darker green for the details.
You can also pull the color further if you would like as long as it doesn't cover too much of the base color and just like the base color it doesn't have to be completely uniform with one another. For the purple, I'm just going to use a thick consistency of Moon Glow and then we're going to move on to the next step once we're done with this one. For the top of the light, I'm going to use Yellow Ochre as the base color because I want the top to be gold, but you can also use grey if you want yours to be silver or any other colors you prefer. I want to create a thin circular pattern for this so you can see that I basically followed the curvature of the cylinder to divide the top into three sections and then curving the sides of each section so it looks like each section is protruding out. Then after I'm done with the outline, I soften the blend using a clean damp brush while leaving a bit of white negative space in each section that we've divided as the highlight. Again, you can switch to a smaller brush for this part of the painting because it can be a bit tricky to control the brush load to paint on such tiny areas. Now I'm going to layer on a bit more detail for the top part of the light. I added sepia to the yellow ochre and this time I'm going to switch to my liner brush because I want to create an even finer outline using this dark brown. And after the outline, I'm going to soften the inside edge just like before. It is important to still soften the blend, if not the dark color will look like it's just a straight outline and it will flatten the painting instead of making it look three dimensional. You can see for the last one here, I accidentally loaded too much water and paint on my brush. This is why the line became really thick. So make sure to always dab off the excess load on a bit of tissue to create really fine lines. Next is my favorite part of the painting to make the glow effect and it's super simple. Firstly, I want to just dampen an area under the light and then using whatever color the light is, for this case, Hansi Yellow Light, I'm just going to use a thin consistency creating a halo around the light while leaving a bit of space between the light and the glow. And I just want to move my brush around to create a soft blend by helping the paint travel across the damp surface. And right under the light, I also used the dark version of the color to create a thin shadow. In that case, it was a mixture between Hansa Yellow, Nethel Red, and a bit of Sepia. I'm going to repeat this on the second one. I dampened the surface and I forgot because I used the French Ultramarine instead of the Manganese Blue. So I tried to switch as quick as I can and just soften the blend again. As for the shadow, I just used Indigo in a thin consistency and I'm just painting a tiny portion at the bottom and letting the paint naturally blend with the rest of the damp surface. For the red, I'm going to again just wet the surface to dampen it and as for the color of the glow, I used a mixture between Hansi Yellow and Nathal Red which is the base color of this red light because Nathal Red can be a bit too strong by itself. As for the shadow, I'm going to use the Crimson Lake and if you want it a bit darker, you can also add more sepia in the mix.
For the green, the base color was a mixture between Hansa Yellow and Viridian, but I felt like the color by itself was a bit too glaring and saturated so i ended up muting the color down with a little bit of sepia and as for the shadow i used a mixture between viridian and sepia Lastly, for the purple light, I used Rose of Ultramarine for the glow and as for the shadow, I'm just going to use Moon Glow by itself. Now I'm going to add the lights as well as the highlights. I'm going to begin by using a medium consistency of bleed proof white to paint the middle of the light where we left the base color and I'm going to extend the white downwards but just placing it very softly with disconnected lines. The top area should have the most white and for those areas I'm going to go back in with a clean damp brush to soften the glow. Next I'm going to paint the highlights. I don't want the highlights to be too glaring white so I used a thin consistency of bleed proof white or you can also use zinc white if you're using white gouache to paint the highlights. Finally, I'm going to paint the cord which connects the lights together. I use a mixture of indigo with sepia to create this dark color that's close to black and I'm just linking each cord to the top of the light one by one. I'm just going to do another layer here to darken the color and also thicken the line a little bit more. Here I'm going to add highlights to the cord. I used my liner brush for this and I'm only painting lines in some areas just to break up some of the thicker lines. I'm also going to add shadows for the cord and I'm using the same method as how I painted the shadows and glow for the lights. I wet the surface of the area where the shadow is going to be and then I use a thin consistency of a mixture between indigo and sepia on the wet surface and just letting the paint travel slowly, naturally softening the edges. So that's it for this painting. I personally enjoyed the simple repeated steps of this one and I hope you guys will enjoy painting along as well. Like usual, the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!